Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett, and today we are going to be creating the Chomper from Plants vs. Zombies. Now, this one has been a long time in the works, but before we get into that, let's just go ahead and model this thing. As you guys can see, I created the model in ZBrush. I actually created this back in July. It's been a really long time, and I'll explain why it's taken so long in a second. But um, at this time, I had never even really used Booleans. They were fairly new. I think ZBrush 4R8 had just come out, and I believe this was the first project that I had actually used Booleans on. And if you're a ZBrush user and you don't know what Booleans are, uh, do yourself a favor and go look them up right now, because they are amazing and I pretty much used booleans to create the whole head shape. So to oversimplify the head shape a little bit, he's pretty much just a sphere with a half of a cylinder cut out for the shape of the mouth and then um, another sphere on the inside to kind of hollow him out. And then you add all the face details like the horns and the teeth, which I just created from spheres, kind of just elongated them, curved them a little bit so they looked a little more fang-like. Then for the stem or spine, I don't really know what it would be, the part coming down from the head that connects to the leaves at the bottom, I created that with Z-spheres, and Z-spheres are just a really easy way to get that sort of snake-like um, curvature. Then for the leaves, I pretty much just created one and patterned it around. I created it out of a sphere, I just squished it down, elongated it a little bit, um, kind of gave it the bumps you'd expect a leaf to have, and then um, I created the pattern on the inside. And then from there I could just copy it around and tweak them just slightly to give them a little bit of variation. And I'm actually pretty happy with how the model came out. So before we get it printing, um, I want to talk about why it took so long, because it's kind of related to that. So first of all, when I created this thing, um, I was kind of looking at it, and I was wondering how I'm going to split it up to print. Because at the time, I didn't have any SLA printers, I just had FDM. And one look at this monstrosity, and you can tell that that would be a nightmare to print on FDM with FDM supports. And I couldn't even really find a good way to split it up without creating a huge seam across it and um, causing Chelsea to have to do a ton of finishing work to basically recreate the model that I destroyed trying to print. So we actually just held off for a while and didn't print it. But luckily, in August, I went down to Texas to visit a school down there and kind of help with the CAD programs and stuff like that. 
and they had a form too. So um, they were kind enough to let me load up that model, get it printing, and it printed flawlessly. It actually printed spikes first. So the top of the head, it was a 45 degree angle upside down. And the spikes were first, then the head next, all the way up to the leaves at the feet. And that just seemed absolutely crazy to me, but it printed amazingly. The supports fell right off and the supports on the inside of the mouth weren't even hard to get out. It really floored me how well it pulled this thing off. And basically all I had to do with the Preform software was load it up, uh, press the little magic wizard to orient it and add supports, press print. That was it. And I think the print took something like uh, 10 to 12 hours, so not long at all, and popped right out. Then after it was done printing, I had to figure out how I was going to get this thing home because I had a huge day of travel ahead of me. I think it was like an 18 hour travel day or something like that to get from Texas back to Nebraska. And I didn't really want to ship it because um, we haven't had much luck with prints shipping. They usually end up breaking and stuff like that. And we pretty much only got one shot at this. So I just decided I was going to take it myself. Um, I bundled it up in my clothing and put it inside my backpack. And luckily that was my uh, carry on item so I could just hold it with me on the plane. I was super protective of it. And after all that time, I managed to get it home. That was a nerve wracking day though, let me tell you. And then after that, um, Chelsea got it primed pretty quickly and uh, started to apply some of the, the airbrush, the purple and stuff like that. But um, this one actually kind of scared Chelsea. I've never really seen her um, afraid to tackle a project before. But I can kind of see why, because uh, upon looking at the chomper closer, the, the textures on that thing are absolutely crazy. There's lots of color gradients, lots of weird effects that uh, she'd never really tried before. And the Plants vs. Zombies um, characters are some of the ones that we're the most proud of and are the most difficult for us to do. And beyond that, I think Chomper is one of the more liked characters because it's definitely been the most requested Plants vs. Zombies character on my channel. So she wanted to get it right, and it was looming over for a long time, but she freaking nailed it. So I'll quit talking right now. Let's just go into the time-lapse footage of her painting, and then I'll explain a little bit more after the showcase. Okay guys, hold up a second. Chelsea had this really good idea of adding slime, so it'd be like dripping down the chomper's mouth. So we're gonna try and create actual slime to do it. It's gonna be so cool. <laughs>
Alright guys, well here you have the finished chomper. This thing looks crazy good. Chelsea did an amazing job. I think overall it took her about 20 hours to finish this thing, which is impressive because she didn't even really have to do any sanding since it was SLA and the model came out pretty much ready to paint. So she just had to prime it and then do all the painting and stuff like that. But this is just a very intense model and especially things like the tongue and the teeth, which you could see in the showcase. She added all those stripes and all the little gradients on the teeth and the spikes there. It was just a very, very time consuming process. And of course, all these little spikes on the uh, stem here, they start out pink and they go to white. And she didn't even film the whole process of painting this, but in just the raw painting footage, I had over 10 hours of footage of her painting this thing, which is absolutely insane. So thank you, Chelsea, for doing this. Um, I believe you've outdone yourself with this one. It's, it's truly a new level. Then to finish this guy up after she was done painting it, she hit it with a glossy clear coat. Now, I know a lot of people um, ask quite a bit about the supplies that she uses to uh, paint these things and finish them. And actually, if you check the description down there, there is a link to our Amazon influencer page. And there we have listed all of the products that we use to create these things. Like Chelsea has her airbrush on there, some of the paints that she uses, and even the filler primer that she uses. So if you're curious, check that out. And if there's anything that's not on there that you think should be, let us know in the comments here and we'll get it added. Well, I think it's finally time to get this guy up on the shelf. And this closes out the, the original four plants from the original Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare game. So I'm extremely happy to see this go up there and we're gonna be venturing into zombie territory next. All right guys, well thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and get subscribed if you enjoy this type of video. And until next time, keep creating.